Jumbo to everyone, welcome. Thank you for joining us today. So let's go out to Africa with Mercado Safaris. Um, everyone is thinking about what to do now. Look, we all understand that the pandemic has kind of squashed our plans and our travel plans, but it's time now. Uh, the vaccines are coming quickly. People are making plans to travel to Africa. And please remember that when you're making plans to go to Africa, you're usually making them six months, eight months, 12 months in advance. So it'll be a whole new world. But of course, I'm always asked, you know, what's it like now? And are people thinking? about going? Well, we're very busy. People are booking for 2021 and 2022. Africa offers a lot of things. Wide open spaces, they call it social distancing here. Wonderful cultural interactions with the local people. And of course, greatest wildlife show that you'll find anywhere in the world. And yes, when you're on safari, we will get you out there and close as possible to the wildlife. And what's exciting about Africa is when you go out on your first safari drive, you just don't know what you're going to see or what's going to happen. So it's an incredible journey. And if you have friends that have been to Africa before, you will know that they may have been 20 years ago, but they're still talking about that trip into Africa. So if you even want to go gorilla trekking, we do that as well. And what an incredible personal experience that can be. So let me talk about the size of Africa, because a lot of people have the impression they'll only go once. About 55 countries in Africa. And as you can see, it's three times the size of the USA. So if you are planning to visit three, four, five countries, you're going to have to allow some travel time. Some people like to combine South Africa with East Africa, Kenya, Tanzania. Well, that's half continent apart. So just remember that there will be travel days if you're going to do that. Most people like to plan a trip into East Africa and then we'll go back maybe two or three years later and experience Southern Africa. Two very different experiences. I also wanna just pause and talk about the current situation with COVID. And you'll notice this is the World Health map. You'll notice that uh, unfortunately the USA is in dark blue but most of the countries in Africa are in lighter shades with the exception of South Africa. And that's because they've handled pandemics many times before. Some of you may remember Ebola. So countries in Africa have learned close your borders, enforce mask wearing, uh, bring in curfews, and they have all the medical equipment already at the airports to take your temperature, to check who's coming and going and most of the countries closed a lot faster than the United States. So the main thing is the world is going to be having a vaccine very soon. It started here in the United States and it's starting in countries in Africa as well. So you shouldn't hold off. You will have the same safari experience as you always would have had. So there are some minor changes. You'll notice these people that are out on a bushwalk they have masks, but they're a family, they're together. So they're not wearing the mask. And that's an option as well. If you're traveling with people and everyone in your little group is happy to have masks off, you can do that. But in the cities and in the lodges and in the camps, you will need to comply with mask wearing. This is a couple we had back last year in the middle of COVID. They were determined to go. They had a marvelous safari. And as you can see, our staff, our safari director is wearing the mask, but they're not. Our vehicles, of course, there's so many protocols, I'm not going to go into them. We uh, clean the vehicles three, four times a day. Uh, we sanitize the luggage. All of those protocols are in place. The Bush aircraft that normally flies you into the smaller camps, they have restricted uh, the capacity as well. And what is uh, good to see is every time you board or disembark the aircraft, you'll find a hand sanitizer station where you're expected to hand sanitize. And that's true of hotels, lodges, and camps. They make you stop, sanitize your hands, put a mask on before you enter. So safety and welfare is a big part of the journey. But this is the journey. The sites are just the same. The experience is just the same. And people who have come through COVID have been very fortunate. 
because the wildlife born back in spring of this year, they have never seen humans. They've never interacted with vehicles. And so they've come very close. Balloon safaris, if you want to do a balloon safari in Africa, they're operating. Okay, they're operating with limited capacity and you wear your mask, but they're still operating. So let me just say that the experience, whether you're doing gorilla trekking, whether you're going out on safari in East Africa, or whether in the Okavonga Delta in Botswana, it's going to be the same experience, life-changing experience that we want you to have. So let's talk about East Africa, the iconic destinations of Kenya and Tanzania. So we take guests into both of these countries and we do the gorilla trekking in Rwanda. If any of you have seen the movies, Out of Africa, Born Free Safaris, maybe even The Lion King, what you see in the background of those movies is exactly East Africa. So this is the home of the tented camp, the um, acacia trees, the vast herds of animals. So when should go? Most of Africa is a year round destination, but let's look at East Africa. The peak season, of course, is June to October. And that's the dry winter months. That's when you get the best temperatures, no rain, and animals have to find water. So they're by the rivers, they're by watering holes, so you can find them easily. Another great time is to spend Christmas or New Year. Avoid April, but you know, if you want to see young babies and life being born, January, February is a good time as well. Just remember that in East Africa, most of your time is going to be spent in safari areas. Might be a combination of two countries. It might be just one country, but different areas seeing different species. But it's not a uh, city and safari experience. It's all about the wildlife and the local people. And yes, this is where the tented camps started. And and just to put you all at ease, this is a tent. You'll notice the solid floors. It has all the creature comforts. It has the ensuite bathroom. And yes, it does have some canvas. So you'll be comfortable. It's like a hotel room with some canvas. And for those of you who are interested in gorilla trekking, just remember, um, you do need COVID testing even if you have your current uh, vaccine you'll be tested before you fly in and you'll also be tested as soon as you arrive. They don't want anything passing to the gorilla families. Limited on the age is 15 and above and they're very strict on it. And yes, of course, we have to get a permit for you. They're non-refundable. However, Rwanda has been rather flexible and has been able to move the permit if we need to. This probably won't last long but they're very cooperative at the moment. A lot of you are thinking of East Africa and the first thing or the first word you mention is migration. So just remember the migration is mainly wildebeest. I mean, the cats, the big cats, elephants and that, they don't migrate. And the migration goes on all year. So basically the migration would gather in the lower Serengeti, probably end of May, June, they start walking north across the Serengeti Plains, and sometimes cross the river into Kenya and the Masai Mara, probably around mid-July. They then stay on the Kenya side until about mid-October. Most of you are dreaming about those scenes you saw of the river crossings. Um, I would never plan a safari into Africa just for that. It's very hard to predict exactly when that massive million and a half wildebeest will get to the rivers and cross into Kenya. It may have a drought in Tanzania and they may move very quickly and cross in June. They may have plenty to eat along the way and may not cross until August. So I plan my trips and safaris to see the most animals and the most species of animals and have the most experiences that I can. And if I'm there at the right moment and there's a river crossing, we'll get you to it. You won't be alone because everyone wants to see it, but you, if it's there, we'll get you there. So what's the difference? Half a continent away is Southern Africa. 
the iconic destination there, of course, is South Africa. And of course, we take people into Botswana, the Okabonga Delta, Namibia, Zimbabwe, and we do go into Zambia for Victoria Falls. Well, let's just stay with South Africa. A lot of people look at this country and uh, the main safari season is the same as East Africa, you know, June through uh, September. Just remember between Cape Town and say the Kruger National Park area, which is the prime game viewing area of South Africa, it's about 1200 miles. So the two areas have a completely different weather system. So yes, it's wonderful to go in the dry winter months in to see the animals. But if you were to go to the Cape region in July and August, you'd strike something like a San Francisco winter. So it could be wet, it could be windy, it's bound to be cold. So for a lot of clients talking about South Africa, I tell them maybe you wanna go on the shoulder seasons you know, in the spring or the autumn, just to catch Cape Town in great weather with, with the Table Mountain open and then get great game viewing because the game in South Africa does not migrate. It's always there. So Southern Africa, in particular South Africa is different to East Africa. It offers you the city experiences and then it offers you safari. So you like Cape Town, it has a lot of things to do and see. In the background of this photograph, you can see the flat table mountain. You can take the cable car to the top or you can hike up the mountain. Lots of restaurants, lots of museums, lots of things to do. And just outside Cape Town, of course, we have the famous Winelands. It's about 45 minutes out, 300 year old wine fields, uh, wonderful wines to be had. And it's a great outing. So you can combine this city uh, experience and then still have your safari experience and see the big five. So very different. So half your time would be devoted to Cape Town or maybe going to see Vic Falls and maybe three or four days would be on safari. A lot of people do that and they add on a visit up to Victoria Falls, which is an easy add on from South Africa. And a lot of people who have been to Africa before want to go into the Okavonga Delta. So for Botswana, I would stay with the main season somewhere around June through October. You don't realize, but Botswana is actually 65% desert. It has the Kalahari Desert. So there's only part of Botswana is the Okavonga Delta and the water level in the Okavonga Delta goes up and down as the seasons change. So just quickly, differences. In East Africa, it's all about wildlife, tribal culture, and you most of the time, probably 80 to 90% of your time is going to be out in different safari camps and lodges. In Southern Africa, particularly South Africa, your time is going to be split. You've got city experiences as well as the safari and rural experiences, so very mixed. So best time to go. Uh, in the East Africa, just about any time is great. Just avoid April. South Africa is year round. You can go at any time. The game, as I mentioned, does not migrate. It's always there. Botswana stayed in the season as much as possible. And for South Africa, certainly shoulder seasons and in East Africa, those May and October times are great times to be there as well. So how can we help you? How can we work with you to get you to South Africa or East Africa? Um, Makata, we work three different ways. First of all, for individuals who like to do their own thing. They like to travel on their own timetable and they have certain ideas about what, where they want to stay, how long they want to stay, what they want to experience. For this, we customize the itinerary right from the start. So basically we start with a blank page and we discuss what your dream trip to Africa should look like. And then we get into the details of it. A lot of our clients bring their private jets in. They don't fly on the commercial jets. They stay longer. Sometimes they want to stay in private villas or private homes, private bush houses. Sometimes they just want to exclusivity and take over an entire camp with their family and friends. So it's a very individual style of traveling. And it's all about 
private experiences, private to them. So sometimes they have very large groups. This is a family generation, three generations of a family traveling together and enjoying Africa together. And they had the option of um, staying in villas or uh, bush homes or bush estates or the smaller tents. So sometimes we have all these relationships in East Africa and in Southern Africa. So if you want to have exclusive use of a bush home or villa, we can arrange that as well. And you can just be there with your friends and your family. Equally popular is our classic small group uh, itineraries. They're in our brochure, there's about 10 of them. And we have multiplicity of departure dates and we guarantee it. So once you've booked on to something, we're not going to cancel on you with the exception of the world closing, <laughs> which nobody expected. Mercado never cancels on anyone. So if there's just one of you or two of you, you, we will still take you on your safari. In East Africa, we go up to 18 people only and in Southern Africa, only up to 12. So they are small groups. Um, we want to keep it that way because we want the safari director to make personal relationships with every single person in the group, not just one person. Currently, uh, we have four people to a vehicle. Normally we would have six in a nine seater, everyone on the side, no middle seats or anything like that, but we are adhering to uh, COVID regulations and currently we will take four to a vehicle. Late last year when we saw how COVID was affecting everyone, we relaxed all our booking terms. So to book something like one of these small group departures, we're asking for a $500 deposit instead of a 20% deposit. The $500 is really hold my space reservation. So let's just say you decide you'd like to go uh, this year, say in September on one of our small group itineraries. Um, you can just give us the 500 deposit and we'll sit on it. We'll come back in March and check back with you. If you decide to go, we'll then move on with your booking. If you decide not to, we'll ask you whether you want to try for next year. And if you do, we'll move the $500 over. And if you don't, of course, we give you your $500 back. It's just a way of us having an idea of how much space we need to hold on the ground for people. So this is in, uh, we have this in place right now and it will be in place till the end of March. So if any of you are considering traveling on any of small groups, uh, just let someone at, or Lisa, Lisa can handle it for you, at Preferred Travel to get your booking on the moving. Another thing we do do for you is when you're looking at those small group itineraries, if you'd like to make it private to you and your friends or your family, we can do that as well. So in essence, you would have a private safari. You'd have your own guide, you'd have your own vehicles, and you would move as a family or friend group. No one else would be with you. This is very popular. People like this idea. And even they ask about private charters to the camps and lodges. So why am I asking you to think about Mercado? For many reasons. We are the world's most awarded safari company. If you've read any of the magazines like Travel and Leisure, Forbes, um, Condé Nast, Afar, you'll notice we have a lot of articles out there about us. And in Travel and Leisure, we have won uh, nine times the world's best safari outfitter. So I want you to feel comfortable and confident in booking with a family company that has been around for 55 years, is financially stable and continues to be financially stable even through the pandemic. We hope to be around for another 50 years. And I want you to go to Africa. We're small, we're a family owned business. This is Mr. and Mrs. Pinto, Jane and Felix Pinto live in Nairobi and they formed the company back in 1960 and they want people to feel as if they're part of their extended family. So every visitor that has any time at all in Nairobi is always invited to go to their home and have a meal with them. It is the cornerstone of Mercado Safaris. If you haven't seen our Africa book, it's a mere 177 pages. Again, get in touch with Preferred Travel and they'll get it out to you straight away. Mercado takes care of the details and it's very important that someone does. 
There's a lovely African exper uh, expression, hakuna matata. It means don't worry. So first of all, all our employees in Africa are full-time employees of Mercado. Our safari directors are some of the most qualified in Africa and they take care of everything. They put the magic in your safari. They'll make sure if you have a gluten-free meal, it's taken care of. We have a second team. It's called the concierge team and they, I call them the fix-it team. You arrive and of course the airline lost your luggage. They take care of that. They take over the responsibility of getting that luggage to you. If the battery doesn't work on your camera, they find a battery for you. And if you arrive without your prescription meds, they get in touch with the doctors and sort it out so you can get a prescription in country and keep yourself moving. We don't want you to worry about anything. So once you put foot on the ground, we take care of everything. So even though COVID, the COVID testing had to come in to get back to the United States, we just enabled it, we facilitate that, and of course we absorb the costs. So you're not worrying about that. We will, we will sort it out for you. We include all the gratuities, so you don't need ATMs and banks or anything like that. We've taken care of all of that. We supply you with a marmot designed safari bag. It holds 33 or 35 pounds of luggage. I can hear the ladies almost fainting, but you can do this. You don't need a lot of clothes in Africa and we will pay for the laundry. So you can clean your clothes every day or as often as you want. All your meals are in, in the camps, the lodges and the cities. We don't leave you stranded for a meal anywhere. And of course you can have a glass of wine or beer with your meal. So what should you wear? Well, certainly not bright colors. If you wear bright red in East Africa, they will think you're a Maasai warrior and the animals will immediately hide. <laughs> so try to stay with neutral colors. You don't necessarily need to have the safari outfit, but try to be more muted in your color range. And people dress differently, but dress comfortably. What are the medical requirements? You should, according to your own CDC, take anti-malaria tablets when you're in the game areas. So that's one thing you should do. And there are a couple of destinations that might need yellow fever. As mentioned to you, as of today, you still need to take a COVID negative PCR test before you get on your international flight. We will tell you exactly when you need to do that. We'll make recommendations to you to do that. And you now need one to get back into the United States. And we'll also take care of that on the Africa side. So you don't have to try and figure it out in Africa yourself. We'll take care of it. Now, these are the requirements. Your doctors may have a lot of other recommendations and it's really a personal choice how you do that. We do deliver some of the best luxury safaris, but I want you to know that we don't own the properties. We never went into building lodges or camps or owning anything like that. We wanted to be able to select because of the camp, the experiences or the location. And if we owned a camp, I'd be selling you my bed first. So just remember you have a wide variety. It could be a large lodge, could be a contemporary camp, could be a tented camp, wine estate, a small city hotel, large city hotel. We have these kind of relationships and we select the properties according to what we think would work best for you. This happens to be a bush villa in South Africa, four bedrooms, ensuite bathrooms, chef, butler, own vehicle, own swimming pool, very private. But this, this is what you come about. This is what we want you to experience. It doesn't matter where you're staying, it's what's outside that matters the most. So for us, it's very personal. We know it's going to be personal for you. People talk about their trip to Africa for years to come. And recent visitors just said, I really didn't want to leave. And I know how they feel. Uh, I've lived many years in Los Angeles and every time I left the Maasai Mara, I wondered what I was doing. But I want to talk to you about the heart and soul that is Mercado Safaris. For every one of you that will travel on safari with Mercado Safaris, we educate a slum child from start of school to graduating high school. 
And that is an amazing thing for each and every one of you to help us with. We believe that educating a child gives them a chance at getting out of the slum and getting a life and a job. Our main center is in Nairobi. Lisa will show you her visit to this area a little bit later. But it's all about the school and our school is now back in. You'll notice the children have individual desks, they're wearing masks. We struggle to keep them educated through the pandemic. And our libraries are now open to everyone in the slum. You'll notice the young boy on the right side of the screen, he's sanitizing his hand before he's allowed in. And again, you'll notice everyone wears masks. This library is used for students to study in. And we've managed at last to get our computer center up and running. This is essential. Uh, students can't do their homework unless they have access to a computer. People who live in a slum cannot get a job unless they know how to operate a computer, can write a resume and submit it online. There's no other way. So we've got hundreds of people lined up at the computer center wanting to get in on our free computer classes to help them get a job and stay alive. So we've just got all of that back together and it's now working. And our second nonprofit that you'd be helping is Huru. This is a nonprofit that makes reusable uh, monthly supplies for young girls. We actually built a factory and we employ women to do this. And we actually increased the number of women in the factory during the pandemic because we had to start making masks. And we gave away about 100,000 masks to people in the slum region. And people began to realize that this nonprofit was making masks and they started purchasing them from us and we were able to keep going. So lots of good news. In South Africa, our Red Hill community is uh, starting to operate. The computer room is open. The school isn't, we're still reading to the children, but if you're in Cape Town, you can visit that as well. So what does Mikado do for you? We'll show you some of the world's most incredible scenery. We'll give you the most amazing cultural experiences and interactions. And yes, of course, we'll get you up close to the wildlife. And you won't need to take a camera that large. You can take your iPhone. And I think Lisa will show you what she did with her iPhone. Together, we believe we can inspire a better world. And that's what the Pinto family and Mikado Safaris, thank you for staying with me and listening to my story of Africa and Mikado Safaris. And I'm going to hand over to Lisa Spiller, who's just came out of Kenya. Excellent. Perfect. Thank you so much, Pamela. Very insightful and colorful presentation on Africa. Each country offers unique bucket list experiences that deliver memories and stories that last a lifetime. But there's nothing quite like the personal story from somebody who's just been there on safari. So while many of you were online shopping and decorating for the holidays this year, I accepted an extraordinary invitation to go on African safari for 10 glorious days in December. That was just two months ago. My African Safari was with Mikado and it featured 10 days in Kenya, three different bush camps, four bush flights, uh, many game drives, and 90 minutes on a sunrise balloon ride over the Maasai Mara, which was probably the highlight of the experience, but there were so many highlights. So Kenya Airways offers direct nonstop flights from JFK to Nairobi, and I flew on Kenya Airways, and I would highly recommend Kenya Airways. And of course, at Preferred Travel, we manage every detail of your travel arrangements for you. So there's many different safari outfitters that we work with, but of course, Mikado Safaris is the gold standard of luxury. And that's why we highly recommend Mikado Safaris. But we will book your flights. We will help navigate your visas and um, any requirements as far as um, shocks that you need to go, and, and we will hold your hand through that process. Um, but let me tell you, once we arrived in Nairobi, uh, we had a full day and we visited the giraffe center where we fed, pet, and kissed the endangered Rothschild giraffes. And I think this is as close as you'll ever get to a giraffe. Um, the giraffe center is exactly where the giraffe manor can be seen. 
um, from the center and they, they share the land with Giraffe Manor. And this is the iconic uh, destination where you actually stay at the manor overnight and can dine with the giraffe. They actually reach their long necks through the window and eat right off your breakfast table. So I always highly recommend that to people um, before they even set foot uh, on their safari. But there's no greater anticipation than that of your very first bush flight and game drive in the Maasai Mara. And it's a quick 40 minute bush flight from Nairobi to, in our case, our first destination, uh, which was the Maasai Mara. And the most exciting thing is the plane flies low enough to easily view elephants, giraffe, zebra, and wildebeest on the open plains right from the plane. So the anticipation grows with each animal sighting from the air. We were greeted on a dirt runway in the Maasai Mara by our safari guide. And your safari guide with Mikado is a highly skilled, highly trained professional who stays with you and stays with you the entire journey from one safari to the uh, one safari camp to the next if you're on a private safari. And he does as much as tracking the animals, educating us about each breed and their behavior, and almost imperceptibly gauges what we wanna see, what we wanna experience, when we wanna eat, when we wanna drink. Um, he is there to arrange massages for us if we decide we want a massage or arrange yoga classes. Um, or adjust the time of dinner or have cocktails waiting for us when you return from the safari. So he is truly the master of reading your needs while at the same time delivers an unforgettable uh, safari experience. In the Maasai Mara, the vehicles are permitted to go off-road, which affords incredible game viewing up Close. There's wide open plains and a big sky, so it's very easy to spot the wildlife wandering freely in their natural habitat. And we spotted three female lion, herds of elephant, uh, zebra, giraffe, cheetah, uh, and a leopard dangling from a tree with his fresh kill, which was a dead warthog. All of this within the first two hours of arriving in the Maasai Mara. And en route from the airport, we were on the game drive, and then we arrived at our first of three safari camps, which was called Sand River Camp. And it's um, situated right on the Sand River on the border between Tanzania and Kenya. And my first impression was at how rustic the camp appeared. The primary gathering spot was a tan canvas tent on a platform in the middle of the bush. Uh, however, once I was escorted uh, to my luxury tent accommodations, I nearly fell over in surprise at the glamour and luxury of the spectacular tented suites. There's a sumptuous four-poster bed with romantic mosquito netting, a Hemingway writing desk, a leather Chesterfield, and a huge soaking tub in the bathroom that's within your suite, and then uh, an incredible outdoor shower. We found the outdoor showers particularly enjoyable after a morning game drive, a leisurely lunch, and then a spectacular outdoor shower in the sunshine in the wild, where, where you listen to the sound of the wild. We quickly settled into a routine of early morning game drives, long lunches at the safari camp, and late afternoon game drives into dusk, where we were surprised time and time again with astonishing picnic setups in the bush featuring sundowners. And sundowners is safari speak for sunset cocktails al fresco. So after our sundowners, we routinely drove back to camp and we retreated to three course dinners featuring fresh farm to table cuisine and outstanding South African wines. And each meal is served with uh, white linens and cut crystal glasses and on china. And the service is five star like you would get in any five star restaurant in the big cities back home. Many people have asked me, well, what do you eat on safari? Let me tell you, we had smoked salmon, wild mushroom soup with truffle, tandoori chicken, grilled lamb, curry, steak, garden salads, fresh local African cheeses, African beers, 
mouthwatering South African wines, international brands of top shelf liquor, and the most unforgettable chai tea and Kenyan coffee you'll ever have anywhere else. The biggest discovery for me was my unquenchable fascination with the African tribal culture. One of the unique things that Makato Safaris customarily arranges is a visit to a local Maasai village where travelers experience firsthand the Maasai culture. In our case, during COVID, we didn't visit a village, but they arranged to have a Maasai warrior from the village come and meet with us at the safari camp. And he sat with our small group of six people for about an hour and just had a very warm conversation with us about the Maasai tribal customs and lifestyle as it is today. And it was absolutely fascinating. Let me tell you, it was, it was probably one of the most memorable experiences outside of the balloon flight. But then again, it, it's hard to say what was what day was more memorable than the next. I, I continue to st tell stories, and I know I'll carry those stories with me with each traveler that I help, uh, help plan a safari with. But for the full breadth of the experience, it's important to visit several camps, and we'll help arrange that with you, whether it's a custom safari or one of the classic safaris that Makado offers. And it's important to do so because at each different safari camp, you're in a different area of Kenya in this case, and there's different climates and there's different animal populations and different topography and unique uh, safari camps in each of these locations. So once again, very, um, very good to move around uh, to different areas within Kenya. I will tell you that Makado Safaris is known for spoiling travelers by offering this all-inclusive luxury safari experience. Um, your porters handle your luggage 100% of the time, so you never have to lift a finger. They provide blankets, binoculars, and even phone charges in the safari vehicles for you. You'll always have water in a, a, a water bottle. You'll always have extra masks. They're always providing you with sanitizing gel. And when, when you collect trinkets and souvenirs along the way, they'll even box and ship them home for you so you don't have to drag it through the airport and pay extra baggage handling fees. So what does one take home uh, from an African safari as an authentic souvenir? I would say Kenyan coffee, woven bracelets and jewelry, beaded and woven uh, dresses and jewelry, leather embroidered belts, woven baskets, wood carvings, jewelry and housewares featuring animals and the likeness of tusks and footprints. So those are all wonderful gifts to bring back with you. And of course, photographs. <laughs> 